Hello, good, uh, good morning, everybody. Good evening, depends on your time zone. Um, we're back with the latest release of 1.5.0, which also happens to be one of the biggest or most significant releases for the script. In this release, um, if you remember the previous video, I've uh, kind of teased a graphical user interface or GUI for the script, and we are finally ready to showcase it. Uh, before I go way too in detail with it, I want to mention that this is still in alpha. I'm still learning a lot in the regards of making a GUI and uh, just designing things all together because there are a couple of things I would like to change. For instance, here the gap is too big. I would like to move all of this to the right and have a preview feature, but that would uh, require a quite a tremendous amount of um, redoing the script. In settings, you can also see a couple of settings here, basically what was already present in um, the After Effects interface and a couple of extra settings. Of course, again, this is still in alpha and there's still a couple more um, things that I would like to change on it. But uh, yeah, you have both a day and night team. It was relatively easy to add, so I said, why not? And I have added a couple of um, cool animation, so to say, like fading and whatnot. Let's test this. I have an input test, DDoP upscale. Oh yeah. Um, on every run, technically speaking, if I'm not, if I'm correct, it should save your settings. Um, basically, if you have select DDoP upscale, interpolate and so on, it should uh, remember the settings past closing the software and opening it again. No, uh, yeah, uh, feel free to try it out and let me know how it works. We are going to do a quick test run. Here it's going to show you the command that it's going to be running. Just for more transparency and just so you know what's happening. It's still in alpha and I'm still learning a lot on the regards of it. And it is done uh, with the processing. And I have here, I believe it was this. Yeah, and here it is upscaled, developed and everything in between. So feel free to try it out, let me know how it works. And um, yeah, that's uh, basically all about it. There's still room for improvement, but uh, it will come. Yes, okay, going into the After Effects interface. So you will see a couple of new features. Let's go from top to bottom. You will see now a denoise option. Basically, the denoising, um, how should I put it? It's really good when you have like a, a really, really blocky, really noisy video um, as an input. You can uh, see some of the models that I've added, spans, kunet, nafun, and DPIR, each with their own strengths. Uh, generally speaking, I would suggest using DPIR or uh, span. It really depends on your system, but I would suggest only utilizing this if you have an NVIDIA GPU. I have yet to add some alternatives for AMD, but it will soon come. Uh, what else? Yeah, uh, the pre-render function has been completely, re well, not completely revamped. That's an overstatement. It has been fixed. Uh, I've added a couple of uh, performance improvements and also increased the bitrate for the output, so it should be much higher quality than it used to be. Let me quickly get a video. I have here a URL that uh, I believe it was this video that I wanted to get. And we have the video. Uh, there's a new feature check for update. It basically will uh, open a Chrome or whatever is your default browser page. And it will just show you what is the latest release. Currently the public release is 1.48. When you will download the script, it will be 1.5.0. And it will also prompt you if you want to join the Discord server. I, yeah, and it's just going to work. Hopefully. I haven't had Discord open, but yeah, basically it's all in here and you can also join the Discord server much easier now. Uh, what else have I added? Let's go to settings. Oh yeah, upscaling models. I've added two new significant models, uh, mainly Shufflequeen and NCNN. This is well for the AMD or Intel users. 
it will accelerate and utilize your AMD or Intel GPU and it should be faster than using the Shuffle Kuga normal version if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU of course. I've also added API SR. Uh, it's a uh, it was made by Kedete, so I believe it was I'm sorry if I'm watching the name uh, it's quite good you can try it out again it's kind of slow-ish on my system but uh, if you have a 3090, 4090, 4080 uh, yeah we can feel free to try it out and let me know how it works uh, interpolation models I've added the Ripen 4.16 Lite I did drive 4.15, I removed 4.14 light, 4.13 light, and all of that. I will also add soon a version for um, NCNN users, so for AMD users. For now, you will have these three options. And I'm soon going to also add the NCNN version for 4.16 light. Uh, encoder wise, there's normally also a ProRes, but I have not added just yet because I'm still uh, testing it. DDoP methods, yeah, uh, I've added uh, MSE, uh, I'm not sure, mean structural, I'm, I'm not sure anymore what was the name for it, uh, you can try it out and let me know how it works, I'm still prefer SSIM, it's just generally pretty good, but it's about the same performance for both of you, I believe, I believe MSE was a bit faster, but yeah, you can try it out and let me know how it works for you. Uh, Denoise methods, there are the Denoise methods, you know, Skun and Nuffin and the DPIR, Again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can try them all out and see how it works for you. It's relatively slow, but uh, it's worthwhile if you have a really noisy input. Okay, let's uh, do a quick, quick little test for... Let's do this log. So we will do the duplicate, um, upscale, interpolate. Let's do sharpen too, why not? So... I've switched a lot of the backend to Spandrel. Spandrel is a uh, package that allows you to load models and it's just gonna simplify my work quite tremendously. I've also switched the backend for the interpolation to utilizing, uh, well, for I used to utilize a different format for interpolation. Now it's utilizing a different format, I guess, a new format. Basically, I switched from .pkl to .pth, and it allowed me to modify a lot of the script quite easily. Basically, just to summarize it, you will see a couple of performance improvements, upwards of 5 to 10% for, um, for most use cases, because I simplified a lot of the code and made it as fast as I can. Of course, there's still room for improvement. There's always room for improvement, but um, yeah. The script should now work as fast as I can get it on most systems, except for the traffic and CNN is uh, relatively slower than expected, but uh, points in sense. Here we have like a 30 second clip that was upscaled quite fast and deduplicated, of course. Uh, can I check? I believe this is a similar one. Maybe I should have deduplicated it. Yeah, awesome. I meshed it. So the difference is quite striking, and it's going to be as good if not better than it was previously. I fixed a couple of bugs also for the auto cutting, it should work properly now and uh, I've also switched the backend to a different um, uh, package, I forgot the name, I believe it was Spicing Detect. It's a bit faster and a bit more accurate than just using FFmpeg, I'm not exactly sure why, I believe it's the same architecture but points to sense if it's better it's better then i will take it but uh, yeah you can now utilize both after effects or um, the graphical user interface that's providing the script feel free to let me know how it works out for you um, i do want to also emphasize again on the fact that the gui is still experimental and there's still room for improvement on it but uh, apart from that 
you're more than welcome to try it out and let me know how it works have a wonderful uh, day evening and whatnot in and i'm gonna come back with a uh, 1.6 in the near future goodbye